generation. I'm going to talk about generation, power generation, um, electricity generation. And my first question is then, um, how can you generate power? There are different ways to generate power. Here are a few of them. Um, hydro electric power, so generating power from running water. Um, first in Scotland, uh, power was generated. Uh, then a larger scale power station, a hydroelectric power station was made at Niagara Falls uh, in New York, New York State. Um, the first coal power station was in 1882 uh, in Manhattan, uh, in New York City. Um, and wind power also is quite old. So 1887, uh, there was a wind generator was made again, again in Scotland. Um, the first large scale wind farm uh, was made in 1980 in New Hampshire in uh, New England. Um, more recently, um, geothermal, um, getting heat from the ground uh, in Italy uh, was first, first tried in 1904 and a few years later was made on a larger scale. Um, oil and gas have also been used um, similar to a coal, a coal power station, so burning, um, burning, producing steam, using steams for a steam turbine and generating electricity from that. Um, nuclear power was first developed in the USSR, um, what is now Russia, uh, 1954. Um, solar power, also 1954, was the first silicon cell, um, the first photoelectric effect. Um, 1984 was the first large-scale solar generator. Um, this was in the Mojave Desert in California, um, and this collected solar heat and used that to make steam, and again, similar to a thermal power station. Um, more recently, we have um, biomass. Uh, so this is burning crops, usually, or wood or wood pellets. Um, often these are uh, converted thermal power stations. So instead of burning coal, uh, the stations start to burn other other stuff. Um, tide is a um, the sea every day the sea goes up and down. Um, wave power is also um, waves from the sea can be harnessed into into power. Um, the tide is very predictable every day the tide goes up and down. Um, if you have a large estuary, a large body close to the land, uh, you, you can put turbines so that as the tide goes down and the sea goes out, you can generate electricity underwater. And as it comes back in again, you can generate electricity again. Um, these, are, these are newer ideas for generating power. Uh, next question of all, the, of all of these um, power, all of these power sources, um, which one is zero carbon? Uh, recently, global warming is a big issue. Uh, we need to get carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Uh, so which of these power sources will not produce any carbon dioxide? The answer is uh, none of them. Um, there are no carbon zero power sources. Um, why not? Well, we need to think about the whole process. We need to, if we're making some kind of power system, some kind of power station, if we're building a dam, we need to build the dam. And that's going to use concrete. Concrete produces carbon. Um, we may use solar panels. How do we get the solar panels to our house? Um, they're probably going to drive in a truck. We have transportation. Uh, most power systems need maintenance. Often there's some carbon emitted during the maintenance. Um, and then decommissioning. So when the at the end of the lifetime of the power station, uh, what's going to happen? How do we decommission it? Where do we throw the things away? 
what happens next. Uh, so we can kind of look at the whole process like this. The um, the uh, the blue part is the bit that we want. That's the power that we're producing and we're giving electricity. We're using electricity ourselves or we're selling electricity. Um, at the beginning, before we start producing, we need to build the plant or build the system. That's a, a minus energy use. Um, during use, there's a bit of self-use. So usually we use some of the power to keep, to produce the power. Uh, and then later there's decommissioning. So that's the uh, that's the whole life life cycle of any any nuclear, whether it's wind or solar or coal or nuclear. Um, in all cases, uh, there is a construction cost. There's an energy for construction. There's an energy for decommission, and we don't just get energy out. We need to put some energy in to get the energy out. Now, next question then. This is a good question for you to discuss. Um, I'm not sure whether you can discuss this if you're on your own. Uh, what's the best way to make electricity then? So um, which is, and when we say best, um, cheapest may be the best if you're a business and you're trying to make money. Um, lowest carbon may be best. So if we're worried about global warming and reducing the impact on the environment, then the best one may be the one with the least carbon. Um, and also when I say which is best, um, I guess it depends who you are. So if you're an electricity company, if you sell electricity, what's the best kind of, what's the best way for you to make electricity? Um, if you're the government, uh, thinking about your country, your country needs to use electricity. Uh, often governments are responsible for making power stations what kind of power what kind of power station would you make if you're a government um if you're a business you may maybe most businesses buy electricity from the electricity companies but maybe it would be better for you to make your own electricity if so uh what's the best way what's your best way to make electricity um and if you're a homeowner if you have a house your own house um how would you make electricity in your own home. There are kind of three factors to look at. Um, one of them is very simple, there's just a cost, and that's often how many dollars per kilowatt hour. Um, electricity is measured in kilowatt hours. If you look at your electricity bill, uh, you'll see a number in, in kilowatt hours. Um, it, if it's carbon emissions, that's usually kilograms of carbon or kilograms of carbon equivalent. Um, per kilowatt hour. Um, and another thing we may look at is, is called energy return on investment, um, E-R-O-I. And um, this is how many kilowatt hours do we get out for the amount of energy that we put in. Um, and uh, here are some comparisons for the amount of energy that we're putting in compared to the amount of energy that we're putting out. Um, hydroelectricity is a very um, a very good source of power. Uh, you need to build the dam and build the turbines at the beginning. And once they're built, they'll last a very long time. Uh, rain falls, the dam fills up with water, the water goes out of the dam through the turbines and it's producing electricity. Um, wind power, is um, less good. Um, you can see here there are two different studies. So uh, Murphy and Hall 2010 and Scientific American 2015. Um, and the different calculations, um, this is not a simple calculation. It's very difficult to work out all of the energy that goes into a system. It's easy to see how much electricity is coming out of a power station, it's much less difficult to work out all the energy going in. So for example, for coal, we get a big difference um, between 80 and 18. Um, this is the amount of energy that goes in. So according to Murphy and Hall, um, you just need to put one kilowatt hour of energy to your coal powered system, 
coal powered power station and for that one kilowatt hour of energy put in you get 80 kilowatt hours coming out whereas the scientific american study was looking at the data in different ways and they reckon it's 18 so there's a very big difference between four times difference between these two figures um, natural gas takes a lot of energy um, to process the gas uh, and you get much less out than that. Um, solar is uh, less still. Um, nuclear power um, surprisingly uses a lot of energy to get energy out. Um, we've seen before that there's a lot of energy in the atom, so you just need a very small amount of uranium to power a nuclear power station, but it does take lots of energy to keep it running and to, to get that uranium. Um, the next two at the bottom of the table, oil 1970 and oil 2007. Um, and we can see that oil in 1970 was much easier to produce. Um, and 2007, um, it took much more energy to produce oil and to make an oil powered power station. Um, so we have lots of lots of different lots of data. Uh, we can kind of more or less compare we can look at this and it seems it seems that hydroelectric is probably the best the best uh, in terms of how much energy we get out compared to energy going in um, it seems that solar and nuclear are the least good um, and in fact this is this is data um, this is uh, similar data um, this shows the energy payback in years so how many years do you have to run your power station before you can get back the energy that you had to make the power station with? Um, and there's quite a big range here and quite a big range for the energy ratio, depending on the different calculations. And of course, different. Um, if you talk about a hydroelectric power station, there are different hydroelectric power stations in different countries. Some places, maybe there's lots of rain. <clears throat> Some places there's much less rain, and that makes a difference to how much energy you can get out. Uh, similarly with wind, and similarly with, with in all cases, um, everywhere is different. Um, so, this is a slightly complicated picture. Um, what's a bit more easy to think about is if you have a house, um, what would you want to use in your house? And I wonder, would you want to live underneath a nuclear power station? Probably not. Um, would you want to live under a thermal power station? Probably not. Um, would you want to live under a hydroelectric power station? Um, that's going to be next to a river or a dam. Again, you probably wouldn't want to live there. Uh, would you live under a windmill? That sounds very attractive. Uh, some windmills now are quite large. They can be quite noisy if you're close to them. You may not want to live under a windmill. Um, would you live under solar panels? Uh, a lot of people do. And if you're living in a house, solar panels are probably the best way for you to generate electricity. Solar power. Um, so... Put on your sunglasses. Say something stupid. Just a bit about the economics of solar power then. Um, the costs the costs of solar power are falling um, and the competition costs are rising. So we saw the cost of oil in 1975 and 2007 and how that's more than double, almost three times the cost for producing oil. And the same will be true for coal and for gas as we use more coal as we use more oil as we use more gas it becomes more difficult to find and more expensive to dig out um, so the cost of solar is going down and meanwhile the cost of coal and oil and gas is going up uh, so what's what will happen um, is what's called grid parity and this is when the cost of solar power is cheaper or becomes as cheap as the other options. 
Um, there's a slight um, difference between um, the cost of energy at your house. So the cost for you as a house owner is not the same as the cost for tubular electric or an electricity producer. Um, their cost is much cheaper. Your cost is more expensive. So the point um, already, I think now in many places, um, the cheapest way for you to get electricity is for you to have solar panels on your roof. Um, it may not be the cheapest way for an electricity company to produce electricity. So there's a difference between grid parity at the point of production and at the point of use. Um, but here we can see the cost um, back in the 1970s, um, one watt cost $76. Uh, now, today, the cost is much less than $1. Um, and it's still going down. Um, this is a world, um, this is a logarithmic graph. This is how much solar power there is in the world. And it's going up, this is um, a few years ago, the data showed almost 30% growth per year. So every year, the number of, of this is solar and wind power, um, there's more and more every year. This is more recent data. And we can see the top graph is the world installed. So this is just solar power, how much solar power there is in the world. And it's going up and it keeps going up. Um, this was some, um, this was at a local electricity company talking about our town's electricity and saying this is kind of anti-solar propaganda. So I imagine for the electricity company, um, they like to sell ele electricity and it may not be very good for them if everybody has their own solar panels. Um, and they're talking about the area that we need of solar panels to produce the electricity for Matsumoto. Um, and the area is, well, it's a lot less than the area of Matsumoto. So, um, I would I look at this and say oh so we should have solar panels on every roof in Matsumoto then we can produce our own electricity because there are advantages with solar power um, solar power doesn't need any fuel um, there's no pollution from solar panels once they are running they don't make any noise um, there's very low maintenance you don't need to you just leave them the sun shines and they produce electricity and they last at least 25 years probably 50 years they will still be producing electricity um, and another good another advantage with solar panels is that they're modular so you can very easily add another solar panel or add another one and change the size um, to fit how much space you have or how much electricity you want um, which is not always true with other kinds of, of power, a coal power station or a nuclear power station. Uh, they come in one size and it's usually big. Um, there are disadvantages, of course, a high cost. Uh, they use a large area. Um, orientation is important. So the solar panels need to point in the right direction. Um, if there's a tree there or another building, they won't last so well. Uh, there's also a seasonality, um, so the sun shines less in the winter and more in the summer. There's also a daily cycle, uh, solar panels don't shine at night time. Um, and also, depending on the weather, the electricity is different. Uh, and this is somewhat unreliable, we don't know that it's going to be sunny. We, in fact, we know it won't be sunny every day. So we, we it's a bit unreliable, which leads to storage. So if we're going to, if we're just going to use solar power, we need to store the electricity somewhere for when it's dark or when it's cloudy. Um, high cost, the costs are coming down all the time. So that's becoming less of a problem. Um, and in fact, if you look at the areas used for some alternative power sources, um, solar power turns out not to use that much 
not to use that much area. If you look at how much area is used for coal, uh, you need to dig the coal out. Often there's forests are cut down. Um, you need roads to get the the coal where you want to burn the coal. So um so the area is perhaps not so large for solar panels after all. Um, will they save us then? Um, is solar power good for the environment? Um, and which is so if you're building a house um you have a certain amount of money and you maybe have a limited amount of money this is how many much money you've got um this is how much you want to spend so you need to cut sometimes when you're building a house you need to cut something so that your house costs the same as the money that you can spend and you may have a choice um should I spend this money on solar panels or should I spend this money on insulation and air tightness? Um, if you do have this choice, um, what do you think is the best choice? Um, I wonder. Just to look at energy return on investment, um, historically, a lot of energy has gone into making solar panels and more energy seems to go into making solar panels than energy is produced from solar panels. Um, this is data from 2000 to 2010. Um, I don't have more recent data. Uh, as you can see, the, the line is going up. Um, this is The bottom is the energy payback time. So how many years does it take before the panels have paid back their energy? Um, and going up to the left is the growth rate. So as more panels are produced, more energy is used to make the panels. And of course, they're producing more electricity after they're made. Um, but this is an interesting energy balance. I think we're now on the green side. We're now on the right side of the line, which means that the solar panels are making more electricity than we are using then we're using energy to make the solar panels in the first place. And of course, if we stopped making solar panels today, then there, is, there are lots of solar panels out there which will keep producing electricity going into the future. Um, so this is something to think about. Um, and maybe not something to worry about if you're building a house, but if you're looking at the whole picture, on the whole global picture. So if you are looking at your house, then um, what's the best orientation? So which direction panels, um, your panels need to face in some direction? Which direction should they face? Uh, what's the best angle? Um, and are there any other considerations? Um, let me just talk a bit about um, electricity.